Hello there. Two weeks ago, I met with members of Northwest Future Society in Seattle, and I had a talk with past president of society, Frankie Denison. They call her guru in future world. She was one of the first in the world who tried to make bonsai future. I am Madeline Frankie Denison. I'm a past president of Northwest Fuchsia Society, which is a society that com encompasses from Canada to California, the fuchsia world. I'm past president of that, and I'm taking <laughs> a little bit of time off at my age. <laughs> Frankie still makes fuchsia bonsai and also miniature garden, and she was invited in United Kingdom to speak about fuchsia. And my first question is, what is the most popular species fuchsia in USA gardens? In USA, the most common and easily grown in the United States is probably the Magellanica of the species. And Magellanica alba is a light pink, the regular Magellanica is a red and purple. The fuchsia, Magellanica is a hardy fuchsia species. In other words, it will grow in our climate all year round. Its bloom it is now sending out shoots and tips. In leaf growth, it will start blooming by the 1st of June and run through October or November. Do they need a shelter for winter? No, it is a hardy plant. It is planted in the ground. Very, very hard winter. Yes, it was a hard winter, but in my area we got down to 22 and the plant is coming back. Can we use species fuchsia to make bonsai? Fuchsia species are not good for bonsai because they need to have a good deep taproot. I grow bonsai, fuchsia bonsai, um, and, but I am particular about the type of plant I grow because it has to have smaller blossoms. With bonsai, no matter the plant you grow, the blossoms will always stay the same size. Leaves may shrink, but blossoms will always stay the same size. Genetically, it's that way. So if you should do not do well. What about a container? In a container, a lot of our uh, species like the full sun, but again, because they want to develop a good taproot, they definitely prefer to be in the ground. However, there are less hardy of these, and these are grown in pots. And if you have an opportunity to go to SeaTac, I have all the non hardy species in pots outside the greenhouse at SeaTac Highline Botanical Garden. That's a garden I take care of, of the fuchsia species. So uh, you can grow any of the species in pots, but you have to be careful on the rooting system. They need a lot more care. When you care for species fuchsia, is there any difference with hybrids? Uh, not really. They all need to have a well-drained soil. Species primarily come from up and down the slopes along the Pacific Ocean. They don't necessarily get a lot of groundwater. They get misting from the falls, the waterfalls and whatnot. And that's how, why a lot of these species will grow well just with a daily misting of water. What about food for species? Food for species is the same for any of the plants. The most important thing in any plant is to keep the bacteria and the fungi alive in the soil so that it can tolerate the food that we give them. Because we can give them a, a, all salts fertilizer and it won't do anything for the plant unless you maintain a good healthy root system by making sure your plants have healthy roots, which is done by the mycorrhizae and the fungi in the soil. In general, I would use a organic plant food and get away from all salts, but use a definite organic, whether it has fish, kelp, organic materials in it, those are your more natural. Everybody has their different loves. Mm -hmm. Some people love the larger doubles, which bloom a little later because it takes more energy to, to do a double. Um, but some people love the early blooming plant named Margaret. It's always the first to bloom. It's blooming in June. That came out in this area and across was swing time. It's a red and white large double. That had become a very popular one. And when I went to England, I taught in England, 
they had that as their fuchsia of the year one year in England, the USA's swing time. <laughs> yeah. Red, white, double. I have 140 different hardy in my ground at my... Uh, what about hanging basket? I don't do that many hanging baskets. Hardies are a lot less work. <laughs> what is your favorite from hardy? Delta's Parade. Very outstanding. Very reliable, dependent growing. Second best, Delta Sarah. It's a single, it's a white and blue. The Delta plants were always very good, very reliable, and always did well for me. Here that our third. Anti Jinx is a fun basket one. It's a very heavy bloomer, hanging basket, very prolific in its bloom, and everybody loves it. Let's talk about American hybridization of fuchsia. The biggest one in this area, now down in California, was Ron Monnier, and that's the Debron varieties. He was a big hybridizer. He is no longer hybridizing, but that was no the longer. biggest one. And his plants are all named Debron, and yeah. then their name. Yeah. Uh, well, he may start in again. He's now in Eastern Oregon. He's talking about starting up again, hybridizing. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bai. Dr. Bai? Bai, B-A-Y-E, out of California, is also another hybridizer. And he hybridizes uh, fuchsias that are more gall and mite resistant. Dr. Bai, an entomologist from California University, made more than 20 fuchsia varieties. And... All of them gall and mite resistant. And also another woman, her name is Mary Cook, made her own hybridization. You see now a picture with her fuchsia. Um, which is my favorite fertilizer? Yeah. Uh, hi, the one that I get online, it's called Harvest Something, and it's, it's the kelp uh, variety along with the vitamins and whatnot and the mycorrhizae. When do I start fertilizing? With the newly newly transplanted ones, I use a product called Clonic, which is has the vitamin B and other things in it. Soil for fuchsia. Gardener and bloom. Two men's One, we must change. Uh, for we bigger must and bigger. change. Okay, I'm going to show you this one. We change pots when the white roots have developed all the way around the outside this is ready to be transplanted into another pot size up go an inch or two bigger go from a two inch pot up to a four inch pot plant it and then you can plant it into a six inch pot my next question is larva in the soil how should we care for fuchsia in winter Larva in the soil. Before you store plants away for the winter, and we all like to store them away, you must drench or put some type of insecticide into the soil so as to kill out the larvae that are in the soil and will winter over and kill out your fuchsias. Uh, a lot of people don't do it at all. In that sense, you can kill out the bugs with those which are not pesticides. They will do the same thing. You can see all the recipes in Northwest Fuchsia Society website. How we must pinch new growth fuchsia? Uh, it depends on when you want your plant to bloom. You must, a single blossom, the last time you can pinch is eight weeks before you want it to bloom. So if you pinch it now, it isn't going to bloom for about eight weeks. It's going to be sending out new side shoots. All right? A double blossom will take 12 weeks before it'll bloom. A plant like this, which is a single red spider, a hanger, you can pinch it anywhere. You can pinch it at the tip. You can pinch it down here. Just do it. Okay. You can pinch out with your fingernail. Another thing, oh, this is a toughie. Another one easy to pinch is cuticle scissors. And it, you know, you pinch out a, you can pinch out one or two leaf inner nodes all the way around. This will help the plant send out lateral blooms or lateral growth. Depending on the plant, some of the plants grow very long spaces between their leaves. Those you have to pinch back a little further 
because of their wide growth. However, most plants will grow shorter spaces if you keep it cool but bright light. It will grow shorter between the leaves and that is the secret to growing a very dense heavily leafed plant. And you do keep the temperature down cool, not hot. They don't like it hot. They will send out long shoots if you get the temperature above 60 degrees. So it's best even to keep them at 45 or 50 degrees and pinch. And then it's 8 to 12 weeks before they will bloom. What about neem oil? Can we use it for fuchsia? Uh, oils are good in the sense that they smother the plant growth, that there's many good things you can use and do not use neem oil on fuchsias. They're very sensitive to it. The best way is misting underneath the leaves, watering every day and you won't get bugs. They do not like wet. Inside an apartment. Inside it should be in a very cool room. Fuchsias do not like the dry, warm air inside. If you have to have it and use it in a bathroom or a kitchen where it gets moisture or you can put it by a window and spray it or mist it. It needs the mist and it needs to have a damper environment. In-house, in-apartment, too dry. Sometimes we see tiny new growth fuchsia and already with buds. So what should we do? We must pinch it out or let it grow let it grow. If it is blooming, the plant is saying, I want to grow. And it's only going to bloom when it's ready. Let it grow. You can use an all-purpose fertilizer at that point. One that is not necessarily, or if it's scrawny and thin, use a fertilizer that has a higher nitrogen. That's the first number on your fertilizer bottle. And then it will enhance leaf growth. If you are happy with the plant, it seems well balanced, go ahead and use a balanced fertilizer like a 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, 15, but use an organic fertilizer, not one that's just all chemical salt. I asked Frankie how to become a member of the society. You would attend, uh, join us at a meeting and of the Greater Seattle. There are fuchsia societies all around in different areas. And if you live up north in, you know, or down south, there are fuchsia societies in your area that would love to have you. Again, Northwest Fuchsia Society will lift, list the different fuchsia societies in the area. We'd love to have you visit and check us out. Come and see. Uh, the next judge show will be is in the Marysville Sunnyside Nursery. Frankie also showed me some Gibron's fuchsia, like you see in picture, blackberry jelly. Debron's blackberry jelly is a very hardy plant. Its grandparent is a tree from New Zealand that grows 30 feet tall and has a great big huge trunk, two, three feet in diameter. The color of the plant is the aubergine toned, which is eggplant or that very deep, rich purple, and its pollen is blue, like its ancestors. That's the history of it. How should we make fuchsia tree? One that is traditionally stable. You have to start at most any of our hardy plants will develop into good trees just because of their strong, their strong plant. However, there's so many of our new ones done by Debron, who's we know the ancestry of. They will also make good trees. So it, it depends on how you train them. And this is being trained to be an upright tree. Single tall tree. Oh my gosh. Five or so five. About the first five, yeah. You let the first I'd say there's one, two, three, four, five. You leave you know, usually about five at the top until it grows where you want it and then you will pinch out your top. But you leave your five to develop the head. And because of a question from Polina Kiselova about Dibron, Frankie gave me two Dibron fuchsias, Snow Fairy. Thanks, Polina. I was very glad to talk with Frankie, and she told me that we will meet in Seattle in Sita Garden 
in summer when species fuchsia will be in bloom. Have a good one. Bye-bye.